Hey friends, I'd like to put something on your radar today. This Sunday is an international day of prayer for the persecuted church. So what does that mean? Christians from 130 nations will be joining together, lifting up their voices to pray on behalf of the 260 million Christians who are being persecuted because of their faith in Jesus. Now their persecution is literally a byproduct of their faith. So if they wanted to stop the persecution, they could. All they have to do is renounce their faith in Jesus, but they're not gonna do that. Do you know why? They have experienced a realness in Jesus. They have experienced His gifts of joy and peace, love and grace and strength and forgiveness, and they're not willing to give that up at any cost. So I'm going to show you a video from Nick Ripken a video that we saw a few weeks ago in our services, and it's perfect for this particular season as we talk about the persecuted believers. Now, Nick is a great author and speaker, and he knows what he's talking about, and I love this video, and it's well worth seeing again. Now, after his video is finished, I'm gonna come back just for a moment and just share what he would ask that we would pray for the persecuted church. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus says that he's sending us out as sheep among wolves. I never really understood what it meant to be a sheep under the guidance of a loving God, but I certainly also never understood the depravity of the wolves, just the depth that human sin will take us. It wasn't long after we were in Somalia. Now, if you remember those bad old days at the height of the Civil War, we were feeding over 50,000 people a day. We were resettling refugees. We had been there for months before uh, the starvation rate lowered enough that we weren't burying 20 some kids a day. In there for six months before we ever met a, a lady over 13 years of age that hadn't had the worst done to her every time she went for a bucket of water. In the midst of all of that persecution of the few children of God, just maybe 150 believers out of 10 million Muslims, that just accelerated. One day, four of those believers came to me and they said, Dr. Nick, we know that you're a man of God. There's some pastors coming from Europe wanting to give us Holy Communion for the first time in 10 years, 10, 10 years. Can you imagine as a Christian not having communion for 10 years? They said, we don't know them, but we know you. Will you be with us? Uh, during this time that we take uh, communion. So I sat up in an empty, destroyed uh, room in a building. Uh, I was sitting in the middle. Uh, uh, these two pastors from Europe were sitting to my right. And on an old broken couch to my left, there were uh, four Somali brothers, believers in Jesus. And I watched them. I watched them that when this dominie, this pastor from Europe, when, when he broke the bread... Uh, these Somali brothers shivered. And when he pull, poured the juice into individual cups and he announced those words of Jesus about being poured out, I watched those four believers look at each other and, and I'm honest enough to say with some fear on their face because they themselves were being poured out at that moment. Somali believers were being poured out at that moment. Uh, two weeks later, I was at a security briefing uh, led by the U.S. military every morning at 7 o'clock. And we would discuss where we can go, where we can't go, and what's working, what's not working. When the back door was flung open and a, a worker from Sweden burst in there and he's crying. And he says out loud, so inappropriate to a room filled with military people and non-government organizations and, and Somalis themselves. And he cried out, they're killing everyone we love. They've killed four believers this morning who are Somalis. And if we don't leave, we have been told uh, by tonight, they're gonna kill everyone that's related to us. And they were gone by seven o'clock. And my heart was beating in my chest and and, all of these words and assurances from the Bible somehow were just sort of an echo in my mind. And I left that meeting saying, God, please don't let it be these four brothers that I had communion with. I can't tell you that I wanted anyone else to die, but I just didn't want it to be those four men. And I got on the shortwave radio and 
called back around to our workers and found out after about 30 minutes, it was these four men, that their lives, being known as Christians, were they were stalked, they were followed, and in 45 minutes that morning, from 7 o'clock in the morning to 7.45, while I was mostly in that meeting, uh, somebody walked up behind them, four different places, put a bullet in their head and killed them. And then their bodies were taken and disposed uh, in latrines in the Indian Ocean where the sharks would feed and in garbage heaps that never ceased to burn and, and to smoke and, and to smell. And I asked my guards to give me some space. And as I walked through the rubble around me in Somalia and Mogadishu, I said to God, do you not understand what's going on? Do you, do, if, if you don't wake up and do something, God, they're going to kill everyone who loves you. And I, I crossed a huge spiritual barrier, a line I should never cross when I said to God, God, uh, these Somalis, uh, I, I don't think they can be saved. And they are so wicked, they're killing everything that loves you, Lord. I think, Lord, thinking I'm a, a prophet from the Old Testament time, Lord, you just need to take these Somalis all out and, and start over with someone else. And uh, I just poured my heart out to God, asking him to, to wake up and, and, and to do something. And I, I crossed that line when I said to God, these Somalis, they are not worthy of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I heard the audible voice of God say, neither are you. And I just fought back with that. I said, God, how dare you put me in the same boat as these Somali killers? And the Holy Spirit said, no, Nick, you're worse. You, you have 18 years in Kentucky, total access to the kingdom of God. But every time I reached out to you, you denied my reality, you cursed my name and you ran from me and you lived a wicked life. And now you want me to destroy an entire people group who for 10,000 years have only known the Old Testament because no one like you have come to share the New Testament gospel with them. That their access to the kingdom of God for 2,000 plus years has almost been nil. Uh, Nick, if I'm going to take somebody off of this world, who should I take first? You? who's had access are Somalis who have none, not measurably. And I basically said to God, I'll get back with you because I knew what to do with the hatred of Somalia. I didn't know what to do with the love of God. Sadly, the Bible tells us of what the world will do to those who love God and who are called according to his will. But heavenly, we also know where the love of God takes us and that if you let it, love wins. Think on these things. Ask God whose sides you're on today. God bless. I have such deep respect for Nick and his wife, Ruth, and I'm so excited that they have committed to come and speak here at Crossroads September of next year. We have so much we can learn from them. So Nick has asked that we would pray. And when we do, we keep in mind this, that persecution is normal. It's in the Bible, that's what he says. And he says, persecuted believers today actually believe that suffering for Jesus is just as common as the sun coming up in the East. And this is something that we in the West we often don't really understand. We long for things like safety and security and comfort, and yet this is not how they ask us to pray for them. This is what they ask from us. They say, please don't pray that our persecution will stop. Please just pray that we will have obedience through the suffering. And so friends, let's do that. Let's pray for our friends. Let's pray that through the suffering, they'll have obedience and they'll find strength. Pray that they'll know that they're not alone. Now I've left a couple of links up here in case you wanna learn more. Thank you so much for praying. <music>